Hey Matt 31, I had a question on section 2.4 number 9. So if we take a look at it, it says if you have this expression for y and I tell you x is 5i, what does that simplify to as you start to substitute in 5i for x? So that is my first step here, right? Substitute 5i in for x. So I'm going to write 5i here and 5i here. And that's how I get to this second step. And then I'm going to make a little side step here. So if I were to rewrite this, I have y is equal to 5i plus 1 over 2 minus 5i. And if I want, we typically write the real part of your complex number first and then the imaginary part. So that's why instead of writing 5i minus 1, we'll typically write 1 plus 5i. Well, I think I said 5i minus 1 here. I meant 5i plus 1 we'll write as 1 plus 5i. So we usually write that real part first. All right, I'm just going to, oh, I think if I erase that, it'll all go away. Let me get the yellow out. Okay, so the thing with, oops, excuse me, the thing with having i's in the denominator, there's a rule in math that you can't have a square root in a denominator. And just to kind of recap where we are, this is where we are. We're at y is equal to 1 plus 5i over 2 minus 5i. But if you remember, i is the square root of negative 1. So technically, I have a radical in my denominator. And math folks freak out about that. So let me write radical and denominator, which is bad news bears. I'll put a sad face. So the workaround there is to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Because when we multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of this denominator, it will get rid of that i, that imaginary number. Now, if you're looking at the number, or the I should say the complex number 2 minus 5i, its conjugate is 2 plus 5i. So how conjugates work is if you have a minus sign on your original binomial, then the conjugate would be that same binomial just with a plus sign and vice versa. The conjugate to 2 plus 5i is 2 minus 5i. So that's why you see me multiplying by 2 plus 5i on the numerator and denominator. Because ultimately, if I'm going to multiply by 2 plus 5i over 2 plus 5i, this is just the number 1. And I'm not actually changing the problem. 1 is the multiplicative identity, so you can just multiply by that number. I'm just multiplying by a very special version of 1, right? We don't usually multiply by 2 plus 5i over 2 plus 5i. We just multiply by 1. But I'm opting for this special version because it's the conjugate to the denominator and because those radicals are going to go away. So let's see how those radicals go away. All right, the first thing we want to do is remember that we've got binomials, so they're always protected with parentheses. And then I'm going to foil out the numerator and denominator. And you can see my work here with the first, outer, inner, last. All right, and then the thing is when you do that, you wind up with these i squareds over here when you do those lasts. And just remember that i squared is equal to negative 1. And that's why you see me substituting in the negative 1s here. All right, and then what happens, and this will happen every time, the outer, and inner, ooh, the outer and inner terms of the denominator will always cancel because they're conjugates. This i squared is going to turn into negative 1, so you actually do get a real number down here in the denominator. And then you can rewrite this so that this fraction is of the form a plus bi, where in this case a is negative 23 over 29, and b is 15 over 29i. So that's how we can evaluate that expression if we're given x is equal to 5i. All right, thanks so much. Bye.